I am doing step one of my design project using the grocery bag. So you're gonna find a cereal box and then you need a Sharpie and a scissors. And I'm gonna use my cereal box as my template because I'm assuming if you're home, you might not have a ruler or a big ruler. So I'm gonna use this for a rectangle. You can put it any direction, wherever you want. Pick a piece of the paper that you kinda like, it looks good to you. And you can also do more than one, obviously. I can bump it to the edge or I can kind of give myself a clean line and I'm just going to trace right around it. It's going to give me a perfect rectangle. You can use a smaller box, a bigger box, it's up to you. Clearly they're not all the same size. And I'm going to get a rectangle and then I'm going to cut that out. Now, I'm actually gonna take my rectangle and I'm gonna use the other side. And I'm gonna take my Sharpie and you could do this with the box or with a smaller box. So I have a smaller cereal box and I'm actually gonna use that to make my rectangle, but I could free draw it also. I like to make it look like there's a just a little bit of a frame inside of my paper is really off but I will make it work so I have a paper that looks like that um, I have another example no, I don't just kidding um, you could just do this freehand if I did it freehand I'm just gonna leave a little bit of space along the edges I can even go right edge to edge and make those little squares that show up in the corner So I'm gonna have something that either looks like this or looks like this. It's up to you. We are gonna start drawing. So um, here is a little cheat sheet of a million different types of lines. Not a million, but a bunch. So we have straight lines going in different directions, zigzag lines that have angles, wavy lines, curly lines, different patterns that you could make. Thickness of line also makes a difference. So if you get stuck and you're not really sure what kind of designs to do, just think about what kind of line did you not use? Did you use all pointy lines or angled lines? Did you use all round lines? Did you try doing a pattern? Did you try overlapping? Or you could also Google Zentangle pan, um, patterns because that'll actually give you a lot of ideas. So on here, I'm gonna do my first step with five long lines that connect two sides of the paper anywhere. Not exactly the sides, I'm gonna stop at the frame. So I'm gonna make a line, I'll do a wavy line to start. So I just did one line to another line. And then I'm just gonna do kind of a free form one that goes all around. And my goal is that I'm breaking up the space. Maybe I wanna add in, some zigzags and angles. What was that? Three, four, and I'm gonna do a big loop de loop one. There's five. So this is where I'm trying to get to right now. I did another example of this earlier that looks like this. And you can see in these corners, I drew the lines all the way to the edges. So I have two different examples. Okay, next up are the designs that are going in the side of the sections. So I'm keeping my little line idea guide here for me as I work. Um, you want crayons for this next thing. Regular old crayons will work. If you have the fancy construction paper ones, those work really good. Um, if you have a collection of colored Sharpies, those are actually also really good for this because they're permanent. Regular marker won't work as well for what we're doing, but if you don't have any crayons, you could do that. Um, but I'm just using regular crayons. These are like crayon, that they don't even match. Some of them came from random restaurants for my kids. Um, so I am going to, in each side of one of these spaces, just fill in with some different designs. So I could do some stripes, 
since I'm using orange, maybe now I wanna switch to yellow and do a yellow pattern. I can get really fancy with my designs. I could do some swirls. I could keep it really simple. It's totally up to you. So I'm just starting with something like this. And eventually I wanna get to here. So you'll see that. I tried to use at least two colors in each one. Here I started to do kind of like a rainbow ombre thing. Um, the yellow you can't really see on here, but we'll be able to see it when we get to the next step. So last step is to actually paint this in. And because we have crayon on the paper and we're gonna be painting over it with watercolor, it's gonna create a resist, which means that the crayon is going to push away the watercolor because um, the crayon is made of wax, and so it resists the water. Now, you have some options. If you have watercolors at home, you can use watercolors. It doesn't matter what kind they are. If you have regular markers, you can use regular markers. And I'm gonna show you um, two kind of hacks with the markers if you wanna do it that way. Or if you have watercolors, but you just don't feel like painting or don't want your kids to get messy or you don't wanna do this part, um, then you could do it with marker instead if you're nervous. So I'm gonna start with watercolors. So watercolors are dry to the touch. To get them to work, it doesn't even matter if they're mine are messy, which is fine. Um, they're pretty easy to clean. Don't run them underwater because it actually just ruins them. Well, waste them, doesn't ruin them. It just wastes them and all the color goes in the drain. So I'm gonna actually just swish and I'm gonna put water in the ones that I want to work. I don't need to get everything wet if I'm not gonna use all those colors. So I'm gonna put water in kind of the red, purples, and blues. You'll notice I actually popped the black out of mine um, because I use mine with my kids and if the black is in there, they have a tendency to go to the black and then it kind of takes over everything. So I save them for when I need them. Some watercolors, they're stuck in here. These are kind of cool because they're um, removable. So some sets, they can actually pop out. You can just use them one at a time. Um, back to watercolors. So I've activated them by getting them wet. The trick to watercolor is swish, swish, swish. Tickle the color, because you really don't need a lot, like a tiny bit on the very end of the brush. And then you're just going to brush the watercolor. And it should be see-through. It should not be dark and sticky. Um, there's no need to ever like push down, spin the brush around, or scoop the paint out. You really just want to brush tickle the paint and then paint where you're gonna paint. So I'm gonna pick a section of paint in and I'm just gonna spread that out. And you'll see, I think you can see, that the crayon is showing right through, which is really everybody's favorite magical part. Now with the brown paper, you do need a little bit more color than you would need on white for the color to kind of show through but it doesn't need to be super dark. If your paper starts to curl, which brown paper doesn't always really do it because it's thicker, you can put a little bit of water on the back, but you should be okay. I like to, if I'm painting in that spot, I'm not gonna go to the spot next to it because it's gonna be wet and it's gonna leak into it. I'm gonna pick a spot that's not connected to it to paint next. So now I'm gonna pick a different color. You'll notice I saved one of my pieces right over here from the bag when I cut it and I'm just either practicing to see what the color does, or I may have ended up with a color that's too dark and I can actually use that puddle of paint to paint with. And so now I'm gonna paint in my next spot. You can also use the cover if you want to a mix colors. So I can get a little bit of this purple, I can get a little bit of this purpley blue, and I can mix the color over here. And this is also good if I'm trying to make it really light. And I'm gonna paint in this spot. Swish, swish, wipe, wipe. I have a paper towel in case I need it. I might not need it for anything, or I might. I'm gonna get a new color. I'm doing blue over blue here, but I think I'm still gonna be able to see it. If you are very light with the crayon, you might notice that you can't really see it, but hopefully you push down enough that you can see it showing through. So here's where I'm getting to. I know my the light right now is a little, Little tough. My kids are in the background and I'm going to keep going from there.
So one trick is if you try to do marker and your marker started to run out like this one did, you can actually just brush with water right over the running out marker. Really gentle, you don't wanna dig up the paper. The marker is sitting on the paper right now, so you're kind of just getting that started. And you're getting it wet with the water and then you're just kind of pushing it side to side. And it will actually turn into paint because inside um, markers are actually watercolor. There you go. So I have just a couple spots left here. And so this one was done with marker. This was done with marker with water. This was done with marker with water. So that's kind of the other trick here. So I could go to even the dark markers. I could use the blue and I could color right over it. Sometimes I have really strong markers. Sometimes, you know, they're even used a lot. So I'm coloring, coloring, coloring. Coloring right over it. And if I feel like it looks messy or I want to try and just soften it a little bit, I just add a tiny bit of water. I don't need to flood it. Just a little bit. these little spots left, those little loop-de-loops, -loop, so I can decide to color them in, paint them in. I think I'm gonna paint them in contrasting to the colors around it. Maybe some green over here. And then I could decide if I wanna do something in the border or I wanna leave it like this. 